All right, so in this video, we'll try to figure out the center of gravity for a uniform rod of length L and mass M. Okay, uh, now we we know that if the rod is uniform, the more, the center of gravity is going to be right at the right in the middle of this rod, right at the center of this rod. Okay equidistant from each of the ends. But let me just show you a quick simple way of doing this. Now you can obviously do this in calculus also, but you know, we're going to do it algebraically. So in order to achieve this, what we'll do is uh, we will break this rod into a bunch of particles. Okay, we'll break it up into a lot of tiny particles. So let's say that we have a particle, you know, one, two, three, and what we'll do is our goal is to make these particles as tiny as possible. We want these particles to be infinitesimally small, okay? But uh, what we'll do is let's just say that we, we're going to break it up into n particles, where n is a very large number, okay, such that n approaches some infinity, okay? Uh, we're not going to really worry about the infinity and all that. It'll make, it, make life easy. If we were to do this, then the mass of each of my tiny particles, okay, is going to be equal to m divided by capital N. Okay, all right, so now we have a bunch of things. We have the masses for each of the particles, we have the number of particles, and if we were to break it into this many, num uh, what's it called, intervals, then we also know the intervals between each of these particles, okay? The, the, the first particle will be at zero, then the next one will be separated by a distance of L over L over N, and so on and so forth. Okay, and we can calculate, we can use this to figure out where the object is going to be located. Now, the x center of gravity, therefore, will be equal to the first particle, which will be, you know, we'll assume that the, the, this thing is right at the edge, so my first particle is going to be somewhere over here. Okay, so it'll be equal to L over N, which is the, the position of the thing, times the mass of the particle, delta M, which is M over N, okay? So this is basically X1 times delta M, okay? Plus, this next one will be located at 2L over N times, once again, M over N, okay? Plus 3L over N times M over N, okay? Plus dot, 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 and until my last particle, that will be located at nL over n, and its mass is obviously m over n. Okay, and I'm going to divide this entire thing by the sum of all the masses, which is m over n plus m over n plus, and we obviously do this n times. Okay, so this is all done n times. So clearly the denominator ends up being simply equal to capital M. Okay, we have this. Now, what we can do is we can factor out a bunch of things from the numerator as well. Okay, my numerator gives me n times m over n square, and inside I have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus all the way to n. Okay, where n is this gigantic number. And my denominator has simplified to simply m. Now, if I were to, okay, add up the sum, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n, okay? Uh, just to show you a quick way of doing this sum, let's open a little box of knowledge, as I like to call it in my classes. So we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n. Okay, let's call this sum to be equal to capital S. Let us write the same number, but in the reverse order. So write this as n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 all the way to 1. Okay, and we know that this is also equal to s. If I were to add this up, the sum of the first two terms gives me 1 plus n. The next, 2 plus n minus 1 also gives me 1 plus n. And each of the terms ends up giving me 1 plus n. Okay, and it does so capital N number of times. So this tells me that n times 1 plus n is equal to 2s the sum, okay, and therefore s is equal to n times 1 plus n all over 2. Great. We can close our box here. We can go back to our expression, and what we know 
is that our x center of gravity now is equal to what is it l times l over n square because we know that the m's have cancelled and then I'm going to multiply this by n times 1 plus n all over 2. Now we also know that this n is very very large and if n is very very large then we know that 1 plus n is simply equal to n. So therefore we have an n times n, n squared here, we have an n squared in the denominator and therefore in the limit as n approaches infinity okay which is what we want our x center of gravity is simply going to be at l divided by 2. So this is just a very crude way of doing this simple calculation and uh, hopefully you learn something from this. This is actually how calculus uh, does a lot of stuff. So for anyone who's taken calculus you'll see the concept of the limit itself come in here. Uh, you know I haven't really written a lot of limits or any, I haven't written any limits thing here except for n approaching infinity uh, but you will recognize some ideas here. Okay, so hopefully that helps. In the next video, we will try to figure out the center of gravity for various connected extended objects. Okay.